side note, dude. I'm gonna trim my beard after this. <laughs> That's when it's too loud. That's when it started dripping. I almost passed out. <laughs> I started sweating, boy. So we're here with the Dodge Challenger. Now I am selling it, but one thing I've always wanted to do is put an actual Hellcat spoiler on it. It's a little bigger than the SRTA spoiler that comes with the car, and I was able to finally pick one up. OEM Hellcat spoiler. So I went ahead and I've got it kind of mocked up, but I got to finish installing it. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the Challenger out, install that spoiler, and then do a quick overview of what's actually done to the car. So you guys know if you're interested in it, it is for sale. And I'll post a link down below to the uh, Facebook Marketplace ad. And yeah, so let's get to it. It's always, I love hearing this car start up, but I'm usually in it when I start it. So hearing it from the outside, even for me, was actually pretty exciting. So, but let's check out this uh, Hellcat spoiler here. So yeah, I was able to pick up an actual Hellcat spoiler. Uh, I'm 1000% going to remove the SRT Hellcat emblem because it is not a Hellcat, but I like this spoiler a lot more. I do have the Wicker Bill. I know a lot of you guys know what that looks like. Where did I put it? It might be in the trunk of the car, actually. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just um, hard install that spoiler. It does have the hole for the uh, rear backup camera. I have no intentions of adding one, but if I can find one, you know I'm gonna do it. Um, again, it is for sale, but I'm gonna add the final touches to make it to what I deem would be perfect. Dalton's finishing up, cleaning up the back of the spoiler. I just took the old 3M tape off the Hellcat spoiler that came with it, but I'm adding this um, Scotch 3M double-sided tape, but it's the 30 pound tape. And basically this is like the strongest tape in the world. Now the secret to get everything to adhere and stick good is one temperature outside. You want it to be about 70, 80 degrees. And number two is adhesion promoter. So let me go ahead and grab those. All right, so you can get this pack of adhesion promoter um, basically on Amazon and you get like six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them. Um, you do want to wear gloves. You don't want to get the stuff on your skin, but it makes it tack up and stick to the mounting surface 10 times better than just putting on regular, uh, double-sided tape. So we, I do mount the, I do put some adhesion promoter on the spoiler then I go ahead and lay the tape out on the spoiler. And then I put adhesion promoter again on the deck lid. So everything adheres properly. So I'm gonna go ahead and start up on that. All right, so Dalton and I, we put the spoiler on the trunk lid, but you're probably wondering, like, it's so sticky with the adhesive promoter, like how can you put the spoiler on without getting it stuck? Because once it touches, the tape touches the adhesive promotion, it is really hard to pull off, and then you don't want the tape to separate and stick to the car and separate from the spoiler. So what you do is you pull a corner of each side of the tape, so you make these little ears like this, you place it where you want it, and then you can go ahead and pull, just like this, the double-sided tape. pressing down on it and just like that there's the back side now we do the front side do the same thing pressing down as you're installing it and just like that And that's just tape. Now I gotta go ahead and open the trunk and put in the two 10 mil nuts 
on each corners and the spoiler is installed. The last thing I gotta do is remove our little kitty cat animal here because we don't want it to be called a badger's. And if you're just trying to put like a Hellcat or a uh, Demon Red Eye spoiler on your Challenger, uh, it's the same mounting holes. There's a lot of tabs underneath the Hellcat spoilers that the older generations didn't have. I just went ahead and removed those because they didn't line up with my trunk lid. Um, other than that, it's pretty much a bolt on. I know it sounds violent, but this thing's on like low power mode, so no stress. <laughs> it's pretty loose in there. That was easy. Oh, there we go. That was easy. S. Not too bad. All right, that was a little harder. <laughs> Come on, R. <laughs> there we go. R. Oh, it's a whole separate, that's pretty neat. The Hellcat's separate from the T. I thought they were together. That's what it looked like, yeah. Dude, that was way too easy. Are right, you wanna believe this? I straight up cut my finger wide open trying to get this SRT8 emblem off my toolbox to put on the spoiler. Now, this isn't the first time this car has cut me open and I've bled blood, sweat, tears. Um, but this one was really bad. Uh, Dalton, he heard me. I yeah, said, it was with my knife. I told really, him it was sharp. <laughs> and I mean, it just slipped. And like my hand was pretty far away. It's just I guess I was just hand-eye coordinating there. And I told him, oh, I cut my finger. Can you run to the back of the Jeep and get the first aid kit? He came back with jumper cables. <laughs> and when he went back the other way, I realized like it really started bleeding. I bled all over the car. <laughs> and like it's all over the floor. Uh, let's see if I can yeah, let me move the camera for you. Try. That's when it's through the house. That's when it started dripping. <laughs> there's some other, there's some other spots right there. My, that's all peroxide that that my wife, that Ashley, thank you, baby, <laughs> that she put to clean all this blood up. And then while I was fixing my finger, Ashley fixed it for me. There's the knife. <laughs> um, he, Dalton cleaned up the car. Yeah. So. It bled on the car, so I cleaned it up. <laughs> so yeah. So oh, man. We're good. <laughs> we're good. Yeah. It's been like, what, an hour? Yeah, it's been a fun Saturday. <laughs> and then my dad came over and gave me a beer. He's like, you good, buddy? I'm good, man, but I think I'm done for the day. <laughs> I almost passed out. <laughs> I started sweating, boy. <laughs> I almost passed out. Man, all right, let's, let's wrap this car up, man. I'm trying to get this thing. I'm, I'm done with it today. I'm done. Uh, there's just one more thing I got to do on here. I'm actually done. I mean, I cleaned up the spoiler. Everything's good. You can kind of still see the Hellcat emblem there. I'm going to go ahead and try to continue to clay bar that just a little more. I want it to be as close to perfect as possible. And then one other little thing is the turn signal. Um, it doesn't release on the down position. Uh, it releases on the up position. And it's been like that pretty much ever since I bought the car. So I went ahead and bought a whole new turn signal. Uh, which is in a box inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually replace that whole system. It's not too difficult. It won't hurt my finger or anything. Um, and that's pretty much like the last thing I really want to do on the car.
All right, guys, so I got the challenger out, finished everything I wanted to do. Aside from almost losing a finger with Dalton's samurai sword of a knife, I wanna go ahead and walk around the car and talk about everything that's done to it. So let's get to it. Starting with the engine, it is a factory 6.1 liter Hemi. SRT is what comes with the car. You can always sell it with the high rise aluminum intake. It does have a carbon fiber intake manifold. Got the Spectra intake on there. We got the breather tube because we do have the Billitech oil catch can. It's anodized in black. Um, other bits, so it's an SRT Max Plus cam. I do have Hellcat lifters in there with forged push rods. Uh, new oil pump and timing chain. And in fact, everything I'm talking about is I'll make a YouTube playlist and you can watch everything I've done to this car. Uh, it's all pretty much in there. Um, to get the car to breathe better, we got to set up JBA Titanic, Titanic, Titanium ceramic coated long tube headers. And you can see I got them wrapped in DEI header wrap. All right, aside from the long tube headers, it does have the JBA catless mid pipes and the JBA uh, stainless steel cat back. So it's a full JBA exhaust system. Um, and that pretty much rounds out the engine modifications. The transmission is stock. The rear diff is the Gatrog 306, uh, limited slip differential. And in my, one of my most recent videos, I went ahead and put new axles in the back just for my own peace of mind because I was already dropping the rear subframe to put in new uh, billet adjustable control arms. So with that being said, let's talk about suspension. All right, so the car rides on BC Racing BR type coilovers on the front and the rear. You can see the adjustable knobs here. I've got it all the way to stiff and that's front and rear and the rear has the extended adjuster so you don't have to finagle all the way underneath the trunk to adjust that. Now you see I got the Speedlogic's four point uh, shock tower brace powder coated in hemi orange and it's the same in the rear. So four point rear strut tower brace powder coated in hemi orange. Now everybody asks how I get this car to turn. So basically I have SPC upper adjustable control arms with max negative camber and just a little bit of caster, but I've got all the instructions and rule books and I've documented everything I've done to get this car to turn. Now in the front, I also have a Hotchkiss um, sway bar with uh, polyurethane bushings in there as well. And then the matching Hotchkiss rear sway bar. And that helps really uh, combat that body roll when you're actually driving autocrossing or road racing the car. Now in the rear of the car, I've got the Speedlogix adjustable billet rear control arms. Again, there's a whole YouTube video I did on that. And that's when I replaced the axles and I opened up the diff and everything was good. Now I didn't put the diff stuff on camera, but it's all good. The car still rips. And that's basically it in terms of suspension. Now the roll cage is welded in in three different points on each side. So it's a six point weld in roll cage. So you got one in the front with the door bars coming in down low. So you can still get in easily one at the B pillar and then the down bars going into the trunk. All right, let's talk about everybody's favorite thing, the outside of the car. So it is in fact an OEM Dodge Demon front bumper, wide body front fenders, and then it's an OEM Hellcat hood. On the back is an OEM Dodge Demon rear flare and the OEM Dodge Demon side rocker moldings. Now I got that from Wesley Motorsports, huge shout out to them. When I was building this car, I was trying to figure out how to get OEM parts and they came through. Now the headlights are not 2015 and up halo led hid headlights these are the factory 09 srt hid headlights i just made everything work with the newer grill and then i smoked out the front headlights you might see this tow hook sticker right here that is because that is a functioning tow hook there's also one in the rear everything is chassis mounted and speaking of chassis mounted this front splitter is also chassis mounted it actually runs all the way to where the transmission is and there's two mounting points in the front two that are hidden behind the bumper that you can actually adjust and then one two three four underneath the belly of the engine now while we're on topic of the exterior these are oem dodge demon wheels are 18 by 11 inches negative four and a half offset front and rear currently running nitto 555 
G2s and 315 4018. Now the 40 sidewalls what gives it that fat look and it fills out the wheel well very nice. In some of my previous videos you might have actually seen that the sidewall is really small because I'm using autocross tires and they're a 30 series sidewall but I really like the look of the Nittos. I think it really fills out the entire car especially from the side profile. All right, now most of the criticism that I get with the car is that it doesn't have the rear flares or the rear 2015 and up uh, bumper fascia with the taillights. Basically, it is really expensive. You have to buy jumper harnesses for the 2015 and up taillights to work, the rear bumper, the rear flares, and then paint and body. And at the time that I was building the car, it just wasn't a priority for a look. I was really just trying to get out to the racetrack with big wheels and tires for all that added grip. And it helped me put all the power to the ground in the rear. All right, guys, last thing on the exterior. Those are vinyl carbon fiber stripes to mimic the new Hellcats when they came out with that. And the paint is Hemi Orange Pearl. It is the OEM 09 SRT paint. The car was painted about two years ago now using all glass red products by one of my industry friends that normally handles some SEMA builds and stuff like that. The paint still looks 10 out of 10. It's really hard to show on camera, but it does have the gold flake in it. Let's see if we can get an up close look here. It just does not convey on camera. So, but yeah, when you see the car in person, it definitely speaks for itself. Shout out to DJ Color House of Texas. He did an outstanding job and you can actually watch me prep and help paint this car again in the video series that I'll post up. All right, let's talk interior. You guys already know that I put in, well, Netflix did the six point weld and roll cage. Let me get this key out of here. There we go. So everything's nice and quiet. This is a Vicres forged carbon fiber steering wheel with the orange stitching. Everything works. You guys just saw I fixed the turn signal. That's been bothering me for years, believe it or not. Nobody could ever figure out what it was. I took it apart. I found it. Now it's fixed. So I want whoever to buy the car. They have nothing to worry about. As most of you guys know that I had my status racing seats and harnesses. I pulled those out to put something more comfortable. Plus my seats had my logos in them and they're now going into the dripped Mustang. So those are in the Mustang already. So my friend Omar, 68 Charger, he had these Challenger RT seats laying around. This front one is powered, the passenger is not. Um, the only thing is that they are so much bigger than the status seats and the cage was built around the status seats that it does give it a much closer driving position. And if this car doesn't sell, status seats are going back in it, baby. Side note, dude. I'm going to trim my beard after this. <laughs> I know, I trimmed mine and I'm just like, why'd you do that? <laughs> yeah, the wives are always like, why'd you do that? <laughs> dude, this beard is, this is the thickest it's ever been. <laughs> I need to trim this sucker. All right, so we're here in the Dodge Challenger. <laughs> And um, yeah, guys, that's basically it. For those of you that have been following me since the beginning, I greatly appreciate it. This has been an incredible journey. Uh, one last thing I want to mention is that the interior is, for the most part, these windows up. The interior, for the most part, is like pretty much like stock. Sunroof works, everything works. Uh, we have a factory stereo navigation that the car came with, AC, um, vents, everything on the inside works like factory because the original purpose of this car was ultimate street car where it had to be a street car with race car qualities. That's all the stuff you make it do to perform while retaining everything that makes it comfortable. Um, last thing I didn't mention either was my pillar gauges. They are the Hoonigan autometer gauges and in the dash we have matching Hoonigan gauges as well. Um, the oil pressure gauge, that one I disconnected because I was going to put a boost gauge in here. I don't think you even knew this. I was mm -hmm. like a bee's dick away from ordering a Pro Charger kit. Really? Dude, like, and then before, and then I bought the Mustang. So <laughs> that's where all the money went for that. Uh, and then shortly after I decided that we're gonna sell it. Uh, but all the, all the wiring in there is, everything is in there. Um, but yeah, it's basically a regular car that handles like a cat on carpet and faster than a cheat on cocaine. Very clean. <laughs> yep. All right, guys. Dalton, thank you so much. I'll give you elbow because I can't fist bump. Cool. Thanks for all the help, man. Uh, that's going to wrap it up for today's video. That's the Dodge Challenger. It's been an amazing journey meeting all of you guys, giving you guys ride-alongs. We are Mopar, BF Goodrich. I've done a lot with this car. We've done tons of adventures. Um, as you guys can see, I have a two-car garage, and I am not selling my CJ7 right there. So something's got to go. It's time to move on. Um, that was the whole premise of selling the TRX. It was an amazing truck. Um, but to build this Mustang again, it's a drift thing. It is expensive and I really want to do this new journey. Um, if you got any questions about the Challenger, let me know in the comments below. I'll try to answer every single question you guys have. Like I said, most of everything with this car has been documented. 
from building the car, Ultimate Street Car, we are Mopar, Netflix, and now it's just sitting. So <laughs> if you guys want it, there she is. I am a little bit attached. It's really hard even saying it's for sale. Like you came here and you were like, you're like, oh man, don't sell yeah. it. I went and saw That's 68. A car. <laughs> yeah, I went and saw 68 Charger and he was like, don't sell it. My mom hugged the car and took a picture with it. Like, don't sell it. <laughs> and I'm like, man, if somebody has a shop I can just park this thing at, that'd be sweet. Um, but all the funds will go towards making more content, building the car, and hopefully maybe even competing someday. So it's been a long road. You ripping my blood, dude? Yeah, I think you should stay. <laughs> yeah, me and this car have been through it, bro. <laughs> Oh man, way too much fun. Tale of the Dragon. This car's been all the way to North Carolina to Tale of the Dragon, Tennessee. Got a speeding ticket with my dad in the car on there, so that was pretty cool. But that's it for today's video. I won't bore you with any more stories. <laughs> uh, you guys know what to do. Hit that like button, leave a comment below, subscribe. Until next time, peace out.